So in this video, we're going to go over logic gates. And first, let's describe the problem which logic gates can solve. So let's say we have two switches. And we'll call this switch A, and we have switch B. And we have a light, or a lamp. And let's say if switch A and switch B are on, we want the light should be on. All right. So we have a statement that we want to check if it's true. So I'm going to introduce something called logic gates, and the first logic gate we're going to learn about is called the AND gate. We're going to learn about four of these gates, and they all have different functions. So the AND gate, when it's drawn on paper, has this kind of oval hump. It has two inputs and an output. This is input A, B. These are inputs and output. And we describe logic gates by using a truth table. So we have A, B, output. Okay. And let's write all the possible input combinations. And the output of an AND gate is true when both A and B are true. It's going to be 1, and in every other case it's 0. So if we applied 1 to A and 1 to B, we'd get an output. Any other case, let's say A is 0 and B is 0, we get no output. So this AND gate can actually be used to solve this question. If switch A and switch B are on, then turn the light on. So we could put an AND gate like this, and now this, this uh, circuit here uh, works with this problem. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to another gate. This one's called the OR gate. And it looks similar to the AND gate, except it has this pointy top. It has inputs A and B. And it has an output. And OR. Let's write AND up here. And let's write a truth table for this guy. A, B, output. Okay, let's write all possible input combinations. And our output is going to be true if A or B is true. So A or B is false in both these cases, both 0. B is 1 here, A is 1 here, and then they're both true here, so that's also true. All right. Let's talk about another gate. This one's called the not gate. It's probably the simplest of all of them. It only has one input and one output. And let's write a truth table for this. Say A output. Let's say it's all possible combinations are only two because we have one bit input. And the output is just going to be the opposite of whatever the input was. So if we put zero in here, we'd get one out. If we put one in, we get zero out. All right, and there's one more gate called the XOR gate. And this has two inputs, and it looks very similar to the OR gate, except it has this extra line in the front. And it's called A, B, output. And let's write a truth table for this guy. All right, all possible input combinations. 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. And this is called the XOR, or exclusive OR. And what that means, it can be either OR, A or B, but it can't be both A and B. So in this case, where it's 1 and 1, we're going to end up with 0. 1 and 0 is going to be 1. 0 and 1, since B is true. And 0 and 0, neither is true, so it's 0. All right? 
So let's write down everything, every gate we've learned. We have the AND gate, the OR gate, the NOT gate, and the XOR. And one thing about the NOT gate, it's also referred to as an inverter, because it inverts the inputs. So these all belong to the basic family of logic gates. And there's another subset of the basic family, and I'm going to write their names out. It's called NAND, NAND, NOR, and XNOR. And these form a subset of this of the basic logic. And as you notice, they're very similarly named. This is AND. We have AND, there's OR here. And we have kind of a fum fumbled up word here, but it's X OR with an N. And they all have this N. And what that N stands for is an inverted version of these. So let me do an example. Let's say we have a NAND gate. How do you make a NAND gate? We know how to make an AND gate. Let's draw an AND gate out. Right? In a NAND gate, we simply add an inverter to it. And what that does is inverts all the outputs. So if we go back to our truth table, let's call this A, B, output. all possible combinations okay the output here is going to be the same as the AND table that we did originally but we're going to invert all of these bits because we have an inverter so if it was 0 it's going to be 1 if it's 1 it's going to be 0 so 0 0 1 is going to turn into 1 1 uh, one, 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 zero. Okay. And one thing I want to mention is the naming convention for X nor. That's really an inverted X or gate. Makes more sense from to me to call it an NX or like all the other gates, but I guess you can't pronounce NXOR, so it's called XNOR. And one other quick thing, when we draw gates out, and you'll see this bubble occasionally, this bubble simply means place an inverter wherever the bubble is, so this is equivalent to this gate, this AND with an inverter on it. These are both NAND gates here.